Thanks for stopping by this guy's wretch. Today we're going to show you how to apply auto body filler and remove it the easiest way possible with the least amount of expense and tools necessary using this Hutchins long file sander. Coming up. Guys, garage. Like and subscribe. Just a quick tip before you put on any auto body filler, make sure you have everything ground clean. Uh, get one of these backing pads for your angle grinder, and you get these five and a half inch discs with 16 grit on it. Use that to clean off all the paint and make sure you back sand all your areas before you even start filling. And you want to back sand all your areas well beyond the areas you're going to be filling so you have smooth transitions so you don't want to put auto body filler on top of paint because it's going to give you problems down the road and problems when you're getting ready to paint so always make sure that you have your surfaces ground clean and back sand well beyond the area that you're going to be filling. So the trick to putting body fill on is get it on as smooth as possible. You want to mix it thoroughly. Make sure it's all uniform color before you even start spreading it. Go right across the whole panel. Smooth strokes. The smoother you get it on, the less sanding you have to do. The little corners. Just let the corners go, not sand it down. That's how you get your corner shape. Alright, let it get hurt, but not too hurt. So the most important tip I can give you is when you get this stuff on never walk away from it because if you walk away from it you're going to come back to a batch of concrete this has been sitting for about 10 15 minutes now it's first thing in the morning the shop isn't very hot so uh, i find myself waiting on it usually the stuff in a warm shop will kick over in about five minutes but what i'm looking for i'm looking for it just to be hard enough to start knocking down with my board file And the reason I'm doing it by hand is because if you're just getting started, you're not going to have a machine. This is for uh, the person that's just getting started out. I want to give you the information you need to get the job done the fastest and easiest way with achieving the best results possible. Work smart, not hard. That's, that's my motto. So this is just almost to the point where I can start knocking it down. And think of uh, saying a body filler like the three bears. Not too soft, not too hard. You want that just right part. Where you can take your finger now and it's it'll turn basically a white color. It's not hard enough yet. Especially working with long panels, you want to use your board file because uh, you want to achieve maximum straightness. And if you finish your work, you're not gonna to have to spend a whole pile of money on expensive primers. Do your finished work here and you won't have to be getting involved in high solids primer. Nobody's going to be following this to work on their 220 Mercedes Benz to fix it up. This is for the person that, you know, is just trying to keep their nuts and bolts going down the road. The other reason to do it by hand is you don't want to move so much material so quickly that you're, you're constantly filling and taking it off, filling and taking it off. The reason to fill is to leave it in the areas where it needs to be filled and just fill those areas back up. 
So this is basically a back to basic segment. I'm going to do this by hand the same way that you'd be doing this at home. Okay, we're starting to get there. See that? Check it out. Make sure it's all uniform hardness. So we're not pushing any soft filler around. So now that we did our checks, And by sticking with it and doing it when it's at the right hardness, you can actually do this faster than doing it with a machine. And you'll get three or four passes out of your sandpaper before you have to throw it away, but okay. What's your time worth? I'd rather throw away a dollar piece of sandpaper. Spend two hours sanding something because it's like concrete. As you can see here, I know my different layers that I'm sanding through. And as long as I don't hit metal, as long as I'm using a flat appliance to sand it, don't keep, don't keep sanding. If, you, if you're catching metal, if you're seeing metal, that's a high spot. So getting started sanding by hand is always the best approach. Look at that. If you have to walk away from it, and you don't have a board sander or an air sander to basically sand it down. Sometimes you might be better off grinding it off. Always sand cross out. The next pattern. Start to see some metal here, so that's not necessarily a high spot, I just have low spots. The important thing is to recognize your high spots and your low spots. Not take too much material out. Always go the long way. Get the straightest possible results. So most of our panel here is fairly straight. We have one little low spot here, so I'm just gonna put another coat of fill in this area. And on our crown here, we're just gonna straighten that up. Before we do that, let's check to make sure that uh let's see if our fender floor still fits. So as you can see here, we have a nice fit. And just a little bit more material to put in this area. And this fender will be uh, ready to move on to stage two. Finish sanding, so this, this part of this area is gonna be considered uh, rough work. And then we'll move on to finish work. And then we'll move on to paint work. So now that things are getting reasonably straight, there's only one small area to apply the filler on, and we're gonna move on to step two. So then make sure your product is mixed thoroughly. One squirt of the liquid hardener across the diameter of the Material is enough.
When you're working around the corner, just do the two straight areas, whatever falls on the edge. Just leave it into the edge, just pull out of sides, it'll pick up. That will give you a catch for your next layer of filler. So as you can see here, we're working with a much smaller area this time, and again we're waiting to get that maximum hardness without being too hard. The Goldilocks zone will be just right. When you scrape it with your fingernail, you're just waiting for it. Turn a different shade of color. So this is a Hutchins board sander. You can pick them up at any auto body supply locally. So most every business is struggling. You can buy this locally, so just go pick it up. I'm not going to give you no Amazon links. I'll give you a brief explanation on sandpaper. So for rough work, it's anything that's in open sandpaper. Uh, closed sandpaper you would get into in the 180 grit per square inch area. This is uh, 36 pieces of sand per square inch and it's an open grit sandpaper so this is a cutting sandpaper so for cut work you're basically doing all your shape work and uh, this video is going to focus on cutting and shaping work. So. That's the focus of today's video. Now well, we're at the, at the point where we're going to start moving this. Once you put the body cover on, never walk away from it. Ever. And you can raise the edge of your file up a little bit. Cut a little faster. Always sand the longest way possible. Sand this way, you just gotta have it's gonna go up and down. Always go the longest way possible. So, I'm going to keep saying to this, with 80, then 180, and get it ready for some finish work or some spot putting. All right, the transition stage. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to change our sandpaper, move up to 80 grit, and then I'm going to move, make my way up to 180 grit, get this ready for some polyester spot putty, but that'll be the next video. But let's get some work done. So you don't want to be doing any digging, you just want to let the board do the work, do some light sanding, cross file, save the support. And this is the paper that's going to get you your nice shape and your contours. You really don't want to overwork your corners with heavy brick sandpaper because you're just going to be filling, taking out, filling, taking out. And again, Let the sandpaper do the work. Yes, I'm seeing a little bit of a high spot here, but it's one of them times where you get to the choice where, well, I gotta put another layer on this anyways, so. And the biggest part of auto, doing auto body work and shaping a film is knowing when you're done. See this how I don't have any 180 for the long file on hand, but I have it for the sander. I'm going to cheat a little bit, but you can do it by hand right up to 220 with an open cut sandpaper. And uh, just 
make it a smooth start. So at this point, when you move up to 180 grit, you're basically just removing scratches from previous work. You're not doing any shaping, or you shouldn't be trying to do any shaping with 180 grit paper. You're just removing scratches that came from previous work. And if you notice here, I'm never doing the edge with the machine. I will do that by hand. I will go put some sandpaper up to do that edge by hand or do it with a, another block. But always do your, your shaping by hand. scratches because the scratches where you're gonna see when all this material shrinks so we take the scratches out now there's no scratches to shrink to stay on topic we're gonna to shut this video down right here uh, come on back because we're gonna move on to the next part which is finish work so thanks for stopping by this guy's garage if you made it this far you're a trooper don't be cheap. Leave a like. You can hit that subscribe button right there. You can watch another video right around here somewhere. So until the next time, this guy. Is. Thanks so much, everybody. This guy's garage. Like and subscribe.